As a personal trainer working with both calisthenics athletes and bodybuilders, I have spent years experimenting where these two training worlds clash and where they perfectly complement each other. Bodybuilders are all about building size through progressive overload, adding weight and controlling every repetition. Calisthenics athletes focus on mastering bodyweight movement, strength, control and fluidity. At first glance, they seem completely different. But when it comes to smart programming, there's a lot of overlap and a lot to gain by combining principles from both. Over time, I have learned how to take the most effective tools of each style and blend them into training that's bold, powerful and sustainable. In this video, I'll break down the three pillars I use with every client. Volume, how much work you do, intensity, how hard you push, and frequency, how often you train each muscle. We'll go into what the research says, what I've seen in real world results, and how to find the training sweet spot that works for your body. Because the truth is, the ones who master the basics, push with intent and recover well, they're the ones who grow. Let's start with volume. When it comes to training volume, the scientific research is honestly all over the place. And that's exactly why it's so important to look at it with a critical eye. Some of the earlier landmark studies, like the Krieger meta-analysis from 2010, suggested that around 5 heart sets per muscle group per workout was enough to maximize hypertrophy for most people. It basically reinforced the idea that you don't need to spend hours in the gym to build muscle. Just a few high effort sets could deliver almost all the benefits. But then, more recent research, like the Schoenfeld studies from 2017 and 2019, started pushing a different narrative. That higher volume, even up to 10, 20 or even 30 sets per muscle per week, could produce greater muscle growth, especially in trained individuals. These studies made a lot of people believe that more is always better. That if you are not doing insane amounts of volume, you are leaving gains on the table. But here is where things get tricky. In almost every study that showed higher volumes leading to more growth, intensity was often not truly maximized. People weren't always training close to failure. They were just doing a lot of sets at moderate effort. In real world training, this often backfires. When you spread your energy across 20 or 30 sets, it's almost impossible to bring true maximum effort to each set. You end up pacing yourself, consciously or not. From my experience, both in my own training and from coaching clients, more volume only works if the intensity stays brutally high. And honestly, that's rare. Most people can maintain high intensity for a few hard sets, but across 20 to 30 sets, it just doesn't happen for the majority. I've tested both approaches, high volume versus moderate volume with high intensity, on myself and on the athletes I coach. Every time, the group focusing on fewer, higher effort sets progressed faster, recovered better and stayed more consistent. Especially in calisthenics, where recovery demands are already high, because of the high mechanical tension and total body involvement. Piling on endless sets does more harm than good. So, bottom line, volume matters, but only when quality and intensity are there first. Otherwise, you're just doing more work for less results. One of the biggest misconceptions I see, especially among calisthenics athletes who are used to grinding out long sessions of push-ups, pull-ups and dips, is this idea that more sets automatically means more progress. But here is the reality, volume and intensity are constantly in a tug of war. The more sets you do, the harder it becomes to maintain true intensity. Let's say you plan to do 20 sets of push-based exercises in one workout. Psychologically, you know you've got a lot of work ahead, so you pace yourself. You leave reps in the tank, you don't push each set as close to failure as you could, because you are saving energy for what's coming next. It is human nature and it happens even to advanced trainees. This is why intensity almost always suffers when volume gets too high. This is often the main issue we see in hypertrophy research, that in many high volume studies, participants weren't truly pushing to failure. So when they saw benefits from higher volumes, it may have simply been compensating for the lack of effort per set, not because the body needs that much work. Now, compare that with a low volume, high intensity approach. Imagine doing just 3 to 5 sets of dips, 
but treating each one like it's your only chance to stimulate growth. You grind out every repetition, aim to hit failure or very close and push yourself mentally and physically. That kind of effort sends a powerful signal to your body to adapt and it doesn't take 20 sets to do it. A good thought experiment I like to give my clients is this. If you had to pay $1000 for every additional repetition you could squeeze out, how many reps would you actually get? Most people quickly realize they are stopping way too early on most sets. They are sandbagging. This is especially true in bodyweight training, where reps can become easy over time and the mind checks out unless you deliberately keep things hard. So instead of chasing more sets, chase more effort. Let the volume be a byproduct of how much quality work your body can handle when you're going all in. If you're pushing hard on every set, trust me, you won't need as many of them. Let's go deeper into intensity, because if there's one principle that separates consistent, long-term progress from stagnation, it is this. Intensity drives adaptation. Without it, your body has no reason to grow, get stronger or become more efficient. Research backs this up repeatedly. The repetitions in reserve model, which measures how close a set is to failure, shows that most of the growth stimulus happens in the last few reps, the ones that actually challenge your system. Anything that stops short of that is just glorified warm-up work. Now, here is the issue. Most people think they are training intensely, but they are not even close. They stop with 5 reps in the tank or move on before things start to burn. Why? Because it's uncomfortable, it requires focus. And in bodyweight training especially, where movements become repetitive or routine, it's easy to get caught in that comfort zone. As a coach, I see this every day. New clients often say they are training to failure. But when I watch their sets, it's clear they've got more reps left. Once we start dialing in the real intensity, slowing the tempo, tightening the form, adding weights or harder progressions, things start to change fast. Think of it like this. In bodybuilding, nobody gets big by doing sets of 50 reps at 30% of their max. They progressively add more weight, increase tension and push every set close to failure. Calisthenics should be no different. Just because we use our body weight doesn't mean the principles change. If a set feels easy, make it harder. Elevate your feet, slow the tempo, use rings, add a weight belt or switch to a harder progression. There's always a way to make it more intense. And this is exactly where I blend bodybuilding principles into my calisthenics coaching. I don't want my athletes doing fluff volume. I want them doing intentional, high effort work that actually pushes their body to adapt. Just like a bodybuilder aiming to overload the muscle with maximum tension. So, if you're wondering whether your intensity is high enough, here is a simple check. Are you getting close to failure within 5 to 15 reps in a set? Are you focused, mentally engaged and pushing your limits? If not, it is not intensity, it is just movement. One of the hardest things to judge, especially for yourself, is whether you are actually pushing hard enough in your workouts. Most people think they are working hard because they are tired, sweaty and they put in the time. But fatigue, sweat and clocking hours in the gym aren't the true metrics of effort. Here is a better question to ask. Am I truly pushing myself on my hard sets? Or am I just checking off boxes? This self-check is crucial. If you are moving through the reps without real strain, you are not creating the stimulus needed for real muscle growth or strength gains. It doesn't matter if you are training with weights or your own body weight. The feeling should be the same. Muscles should be burning. Technique should start to break down slightly as you near the end of the set. You should be mentally fighting for every last clean repetition. You should be questioning whether you can actually finish the set. If you never feel this level of intensity, you are leaving gains on the table. Here is a cool analogy I like to give my clients. Imagine a video game where every perfectly executed hard set gives you double XP. Would you just cruise through it or would you go all in every time for the bonus points? It is the same with your body. Every truly hard set is a double XP opportunity for growth. And this is also where tracking comes into play. In my coaching practice, I always encourage people to write down their reps, sets and how close they were to failure. Using reps in reserve or effort scale. When you review your notes and realize you could have done more, you've got immediate feedback to push harder next time. Long term progress isn't built by adding random sets. 
It is built by attacking the sets you already have with relentless focus and effort. Now that we have covered intensity and volume, we need to talk about frequency. How often you should train each muscle group to maximize results? Here is the truth. Frequency is not one size fits all. It depends on your ability to recover and recovery is highly individual. Some people can train their muscles every 48 hours and feel great. Others might need 72 hours or more before they are ready to hit that muscle again with high intensity. Different factors like genetics, sleep, nutrition and overall stress all play a role. The general rule that works well for most people and I applied in my coaching is Train each major muscle group 2-3 to three times per week. Divide your weekly volume across these sessions. For example, instead of cramming 15 sets of push exercises into one day, you might do 5 sets on Monday, 5 on Wednesday and 5 on Friday. This approach allows you to maintain higher intensity per workout, recover better between sessions and keep the muscles in a more frequent state of adaptation. Here is the key though, monitor your body's feedback. If you are constantly sore for 3-4 to four days after a session and your performance drops, you are doing too much. Reduce volume or intensity slightly. If you feel fully recovered by the next day and you are not progressing, you might be able to handle more work. Add a set or two. If progress stalls for certain muscle groups, but not others, adjust frequency specifically for that body part. Everyone has stronger and weaker muscle groups and different recovery rates. You have to be willing to experiment, listen to the signals your body sends and adjust your plan accordingly. Over time, you'll find your personal sweet spot where effort, recovery and frequency line up perfectly. And that's when real, sustainable progress happens. Alright, let's sum it all up. Training isn't about doing more for the sake of doing more. It's about doing better, harder and smarter work. Keep your volume manageable, push your intensity as high as possible and train often enough that your body is constantly adapting. But not so often that you dig yourself into a recovery hole. If you want real world example of how this looks, this is exactly what I implement in my coaching practice. Whether you are a calisthenics athlete, a hybrid lifter or even a bodybuilder. I blend the control, fluidity and body awareness of calisthenics with the muscle building, load driven principles of bodybuilding. Using smart, personalized programming based on science, experience and testing what truly works. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like, subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss the next session. And if you're ready to take your training to the next level, whether it's bodyweight mastery, building muscle or unlocking your best performance, check out the first link in the description for personalized coaching with me. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next session.